This is the Genmax GM2200i, and I know what you're probably thinking, this is a sponsored video. It's not. I paid real money for this, my own money. I've been using it for two or three weeks now, and I really, really like it. I'm super glad I purchased it. So I wanted to make a quick video about it in case you're shopping around for a generator. Maybe you came across this one on Amazon like I did. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So this is an inverter generator, meaning it's got an inverter built in. You can plug in directly to the AC ports. It's got two AC ports, 120 volts. It also has a DC USB type A ports. And the 2200 in the name suggests 2200 watts, which is sort of correct. That's like the surge rating. So basically it can start out at 2200 watts, but it actually only has 1800 running watts, which this is how all inverter generators, power stations, things like that, they're all advertised with the higher number but really it's an 1800 watt generator. Like I mentioned, I paid $300 for this, which I think is a fantastic price for 1800 watts. However, I did just check the price before I started filming and it looks like it's actually up to $369 right now. So I must've got it on sale, but just, you know how Amazon does sales all the time. So just keep an eye on it, keep it in your cart, keep looking at it. I bet it'll drop back down to under 300 again pretty soon. What's really cool about this is it holds a gallon of gas and at half capacity, so 900 watts, it can run for six and a half hours. I primarily got this so that I can run heating in my tool shed back there since it's winter now. And in the summer, I wanna run some AC. So I needed something that could run at least 1500 watts for an extended period of time. And this checked all those boxes for $300. It was super easy to get it running the first time. It did actually come with oil. It takes 10W30 oil. And this was just the right amount. You add your oil right in here just by opening up this little slot. Here is your dipstick, and it also came with this funnel that threads right down in there. Makes it super easy to pour your oil in. Now, when I was researching inverter generators, I saw that a lot of people switch out the spark plug right off the bat. And if you want to do that, it's super easy to access the spark plug. It's under this little cap here. You can just disconnect this, and there it is. There's your spark plug. I left the stock one in there. If you think I should swap it out, let me know why in the comments but I don't really see a reason to. It works. You also have super easy access to your uh, air filter, which it recommends to clean every 50 hours. And also super important, it has a carbon monoxide detector, which will automatically shut it down if it detects hazardous levels of carbon monoxide. It also has a carbon monoxide, a little indicator here, a low oil alarm and an overload alarm and an output indicator, which basically just says, yes, I'm outputting some energy. It has an eco mode, which I thought would be stupid and I would never use, but it turns out I actually use it all the time. And I'll show you why in a little bit. And it's also ready to run in parallel if you're interested in doing that. So let me show you how you get it up and running. So you're gonna start right here at the top. You've got your gas cap here. And this is where you can pour in your gas. After you've poured in a gallon of gas, you can screw that back on. And now you can flip this to on. All right, now we're gonna flip this switch to choke. And I'm going to turn off eco mode. Now I'm ready to pull the cord. Now I'm going to flip this back to run. And now I'm going to flip this back to eco. As you can tell, eco mode makes it run a lot quieter. That's why I leave it in eco mode pretty much all the time. There's our output indicator telling us that it gets ready to output energy. As you can tell, it's really not very loud. And that's a big reason why I purchased this is it's supposed to be super quiet. And you know, no generators are actually super quiet, but as far as a generator goes, I think this is about as quiet as it gets, especially in eco mode. And so far I've found no reason to not run it in eco mode. I've ran my space heater, I've ran fans and charged batteries, and I even ran a shop vac all in eco mode. And so far it's been able to keep up with it. So I really don't know what I'd have to do to turn off eco mode. Maybe if I'm running like a shop vac and a miter saw at the same time, I don't know. It says it runs as quiet as 58 decibels, but if you're anything like me, then that's just a number to you and you don't actually know what that means. But here we are pretty far away. You can hear how loud it is. But what's really crazy, let me go in that shed right next door. So I've got a fence and one wall between us. All right, I'm inside my shed now. The generator is directly on the other side of that fence that you can see through this window. And I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it on the mic or not, if it's picking up. I can just barely hear it. 
if I'm out here doing something, it's not annoying at all. Like it's just sort of off in the distance. Go ahead and turn it off just so you can hear me talk a little better. So far, it has started on the first pull every single time. Maybe the very first time I cranked it, it took like two pulls, but after that, it's been the first pull every time. No matter how hot or how cold it is outside, first pull. So far, I've ran this thing for a couple hours at a time, and it does not get hot. I mean, like, it's a little warm, like you'd expect. It is an engine running after all, but it's not, like, dangerous, hot, or concerning at all. I usually just let it sit outside for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour or so. Let it cool down a little bit after I'm done using it before I put it inside for storage. It's not super heavy, it's just right under 42 pounds. I think it says like 41.8 in the user manual. So it's not like fun to carry it around, but if you need to lug it from one place to another, it's really not that bad. Now this tool shed behind me is actually solar powered for the most part. So I've been using this as kind of supplemental power for my solar setup and it's working really well. So basically I just run an extension cord from one of the AC ports and I'll just yeet it over the fence. And then over here behind my solar panel, I've got a little AC plug here. And, and I actually have a video about me installing this if you wanna learn more about that, it's pretty cool. So I plug the other end of my extension cord in there and then, and then inside the shed, here's the other end of that adapter plug thing. It's got two female ends right here. So I've got one plugged into a space heater and then I've got the other one plugged into my solar power station. So basically my solar power station is normally getting a solar input. You can see the little sun icon there telling me it's getting solar input, but sometimes solar is not enough. Sometimes I'm out here in the dark with the boys playing video games or something, and I need a little bit more power so I can fire up the generator and charge this battery using that generator. And the solar power station is only 350 running watts. So if I need to plug up something that uses more than that, like a shop vac or a saw, then I just unhook my power station from my little wall adapter here and I'll plug in the saw or the shop vac directly. That way the saw or the shop vac has access to all 1800 running watts from the generator. So overall, I feel like this is a killer deal. $300 for this, super good. Like I said, I think it's going for $369 regularly, but just wait for a sale like I did. Get it for $295 is exactly what I paid for it. And honestly, that's hard to beat. If you look at comparable stats in like a solar power station or really just any other inverter generator, $300 for 1800 watts plus a gallon tank, I mean, that's pretty good. Like I said, this is not a sponsored video, but I am in the Amazon affiliate program, so I'll leave an affiliate link down below if you wanna check this out for yourself on Amazon. If you use that link, I get a tiny kickback of some sort, so feel free to use that link. And if you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button so YouTube knows to push it to more people. And as always, thank you very much for watching.